This video is part of a series of SSIS tutorial videos created by CozyRock. In this video, I will show you how to use variables and expressions to load data from different databases and even different servers in the same package. Here you can see the data in the two tables that I'm going to be using as input. And they both are on the same server, but they're in different databases. And they have all the same columns, same column names, same number of columns. And here is the table that we're going to load both of those input tables into. And that is in the same database as the South Elgin input table. And then to tell our package where to find the input tables, we're going to be using this table. We'll be loading this into an object variable and feeding that to the for each loop container. So here you can see this table tells the package the name of the table, the server name where the table is located, and the database name where the table is located. Both of the source tables will be on the same server. But the way I'm designing the package, you would be able to uh, load tables from different servers as well as different databases on those servers. Now we'll go over to Management Studio. And I'm going to start by configuring the object variable. And I'm going to call that table list. And the type will be object. And then we're going to use the execute SQL task first to load the uh, both rows from that table into our object variable. So we'll be loading a full result set and the connection type will be OLEDB. Need to set up a new connection and this one will be in the 2023 tutorials database and we'll be using direct input and then we'll be loading this from the um, table list table. And then the result set the, the result name should be zero and it gets loaded into table list, which is our object variable that we set up. And then I'm going to name this connection manager tutorials underscore 2023 database connection. So this one will not be using a variable or an expression. It's going to be always referencing the database called Tutorials uh, 2023 on our server. And then we'll go down to get the 4-H loop container. OK, so we're going to be using this to load the object variable with table info. And then in the 4-H loop container, we need to set up to use 4-H ADO enumerator. And we'll tell it to use our table list, our object variable. And then for the variable mappings, so if we go back to Management Studio, uh, the first column is table name, then server name, then database name. So that's the order we need to load them in. All right, so this variable will be table name, string, and value. Um, we'll use the south Elgin input table as the value at first, the initial value. And then our next variable will be the server name. And 
That is Diane dash twenty twenty dash Leno. And then the final column that we'll be loading will be the DB name. And we'll use the uh, 2023 underscore to tutorials database. OK. And then we'll drag the data flow task inside the 4-H loop container. Double click on that to go over to the data flow canvas. And we're going to be using OLEDB source and OLEDB destination. So we'll start with the source to load data from specified table. Double click on it to open the editor. And we need to use a different connection manager because this one is going to change depending on which database we're loading the table from. And uh, we're going to start out, though, with it using that same database, the 2023 tutorials. And we're going to be loading, based on the table name, that we put in the table name variable. And we can preview it. So we set up our table name variable to point at the South Elgin input table, and there's the data. And now we can close that. And then we'll use the OLEDB destination. All right, this is going to be used to load the data into the gaming data table, which again should use the first connection we set up, which is the one we called tutorial 2023 DB connection, because that table is always going to be in that database. And so we don't need to use a variable for this. It's always going to be the gaming data table. We'll click on Mappings to do the mapping. So all the columns were mapped. Stay tuned to see how I complete the configuration of the package. Are you tired of updating packages because of changing metadata? How many hours have you spent accommodating new source and destination columns? How many nearly identical packages do you have to maintain? especially when you need to update hundreds of them. Well, you should check out Cozy Rock's Dataflow Task Plus component. Dataflow Task Plus provides the ability to acquire the metadata and map the columns at runtime. You can even use transformations on the data. Just add the changes at the source and destination, execute, and Dataflow Task Plus will handle the process of extracting, transforming, and loading the desired columns from the source to the destination without a need to change the existing package. It works with any standard SSIS Dataflow components, transformations, and application adapters. No more manual package updates. Design your SSIS data flows with Dataflow Task Plus and save hundreds of hours. A vision of completely metadata-driven processing is now possible. Download Cozy Rock's Dataflow Task Plus from CozyRock.com. It's free for testing and development within Visual Studio. Now, this connection manager, which is the one that's going to use variables and expressions, uh, first, we're going to rename it to uh, variable db connection. And then we're going to edit the properties. So I right mouse clicked on the connection manager. We select properties. And here in expressions, uh, we're going to find the server name property, and the expression is going to consist of 
the server name variable, which right now is set to that, and it actually will not change because both tables are in this on the same server, but they could be on different ones. And then initial catalog is where we specify the name of the database. So we'll use the DB name variable there, which currently is set to 2023 tutorials, but that will change. So we should be good to go here. So I'll execute the package. And it was successful, so I'll stop debugging. And we'll go over to Management Studio. And let's look at the gaming data table, which was our destination table. And here you can see we have South Elgin uh, records loaded up and then Wooddale records. So we did get the data from both of those tables. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to follow us on social media, here's how you can do that.